Good evening. My name is Alexander Hagen. I'm in beautiful Beaumaris, Anglesey in Wales. Actually, the island is in a Simon in Welsh. Uh, I've been in Greece recently and talked to a lot of people about the situation there and in Turkey and spoke to the people there about the situation in uh, Libya and Syria and elsewhere. <clears throat> um, and I want to speak to you tonight about the Tunisia attacks. These Tunisia attacks are part of the opening of the gate of hell after we eradicated the police force and military of Libya and left a gaping security hole in a country that although strict had a high standard of living, uh, had reached accommodation with the West and was actually actively cooperating in anti-terrorism efforts. <clears throat> as it was Syria. The thing that really makes me so angry about these uh, attacks in Tunisia is the lack of soul-searching by people like Hillary Clinton and David Cameron and Anders Fogh Rasmussen. Hillary Clinton laughed uh, when Gaddafi died. She said, we came, we saw he died. This is a reference to Julius Caesar so if anybody should doubt that Hillary Clinton is an ultra-imperialist, she certainly uh, did use the language, ultimate language, of absolutely barbarous militarism. Uh, <clears throat> because here in, in Asmon, on the Isle of Anglesey, we can recall what the Romans did when they marched across the Straits of Manai and hacked to death all the Druids and then cut all their forests down. Uh, Anders Fogh Rasmussen said, we will continue our operation in Libya until no civilian can be harmed. So he decided to kill every policeman, every soldier in Libya. And this is a logical consequence. This is just one tiny consequence that we're going to have to deal with in the opening of the gates of hell in Libya. Yet there's no call for any public accountability. And as I travel around here in Britain uh, and I see the type of magazines and newspapers that are available to people, I realize that we're sort of doomed because without an educated citizenry, democracy is a charade. <clears throat> uh, so it is rather depressing, at least in the West. But in Turkey and in Greece, in Turkey and in Greece, I'm a little bit more optimistic. I'm really furious that these leaders can act like they have amnesia, that they destroyed Libya, armed jihadists, armed criminals, really. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there, I mean, jihad is a complicated concept. There's a jihad, which is a struggle within the self. There's jihad, which is confronting uh, injustice in the world. But these people, they aren't, I mean, jihadist isn't really even the right word to use for these people. Um, <clears throat> but at any rate, <clears throat> we cracked open Libya, and this will cause millions to suffer. I, I see people uh, critiquing uh, what's happened in Libya and saying there's a hundred thousand people who've uh, who fled Libya. Well, actually, there's one third of the population has fled the country, which is a very considerable way to vote, is to vote with your feet. Two million people have fled Libya. If you uh, look into comments made by Le Monde, uh, a reporter for Le Monde, uh, from the Tunisian uh, government, the Egyptian government, there's over there's a million and a half Libyans out of six million in Tunisia alone. There's probably another half million in Egypt. So Libya has been depopulated. <coughs> um, and, uh, you know, a huge amount of the population in Libya are foreign workers. So when will our leaders accept responsibility?